In the news this week, Communications Minister Issa Pantami has to resign or be fired. It is now very apparent that Nigeria's Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, the 48-year-old Sheikh Issa Ali Pantami, is a terrorism sympathizer who has relayed radical, extremist, and dangerous religious views all his life and who shouldn't remain a day longer in government. Pantami, an Islamic cleric and scholar before he was appointed into government by President Buhari in 2016 and 2019, has only had nice things to say about the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, Osama bin Laden, and other terrorists. Pantami once said, and I quote, we are always happy whenever unbelievers are killed. Unbelievers here, of course, refer to non-Muslims. He always labeled infidels. Pantami hailed Osama bin Laden, who orchestrated the terrorist attacks on United States soil on September 11, 2001, saying, and I quote, bin Laden is a better Muslim than myself. Pantami once said, oh God, give victory to the Taliban and to Al-Qaeda. He also said the jihad is an obligation for every single believer, especially in Nigeria. There are fresh documents in the cyberspace detailing how Pantami and other Muslim leaders allegedly plotted to assassinate former Kaduna State Governor Patrick Yakoa, a Christian. According to these documents, Pantami chaired the July 13, 2010 meeting of the JNI, where it was resolved that Yakoa and his family must be eliminated because he was a Christian leader governing a state in the predominantly Muslim North. Yakoa contested in the 2011 general elections and won a substantive four-year term. However, barely a year later, in 2012, Yakoa died in a helicopter crash alongside then National Security Advisor Andrew Azazi, a Christian from Bayelsa State. A peek at Pantami's immediate past is to tread on a minefield littered with sinister religious and inflammatory rhetoric, fundamentalism, and extremism. Pantami has renounced some of his past jihadist remarks, saying he was too young at the time to understand how the world works, and that he rendered these comments as a teenager, even though some of these remarks were made while Pantami was in his late 20s or early 30s. The problem for the rest of the country is that Pantami occupies a most sensitive position in the federal government. This is no longer about Pantami. Pantami's continued presence in the power corridors has far-reaching national security implications. This man sits on the Federal Executive Council, the highest decision-making body in our country. Pantami is also in charge of the National Identification Number NIN project, harvesting all our data for security purposes. We can no longer trust Pantami with our personal information. Not now, not ever. Who is to say he is not passing our personal information to Boko Haram or other terrorist groups? It says a lot about President Muhammad Buhari that he hired Pantami to serve at his pleasure since 2016. It says a lot about the DSS and the Nigerian Senate that Pantami was vetted to serve as minister and that he was cleared to take a bow and go during the screening of Buhari's ministerial picks. That Senate screening of ministerial picks has been a charade anyway, a complete disgrace and an insult to taxpayers. As we battle insurgency in the Northeast and across the Federation, like we've done since 2009, Pantami is one ally we can certainly do without. The allegations against Pantami are weighty and grave. His position in the highest level of government in our beleaguered nation has become indefensible and untenable. A man who has dined with terrorists and who has applauded acts of terrorism that have shocked and agonized the entire world shouldn't remain in government a day longer. Pantami should fall on his sword by submitting his resignation as the Minister of the Federal Republic, effective immediately. He wouldn't be the first Nigerian minister to throw in the towel since our nascent democracy took off in 1999. Professor Bat Naji resigned due to conflict of interest. Stella Odua resigned due to conflict of interest. Kemi Adoshun resigned and fled the country after it became clear that her presence in government was becoming a national embarrassment. Given that Issa pandemic, sorry, Pantami, may never resign because apparently he has coconut head, 
President Buhari needs to save Pantami from himself by sacking him without delay. Afterwards, Pantami should be arrested and prosecuted. He shouldn't be let off the hook until he tells this nation all he knows about Boko Haram and the decade-long insurgency that has crippled our nation and economy. It would be the right thing to do and a wise security decision for the uncertain times we now live in. And that's it in the news this week.